this is my June reading wrap up and I'm going to recommend that you grab yourself a drink and a snack because somehow I managed to read 21 books in the month of June. It's an anomaly that will probably never happen again but I had a really great time with everything that I read and I'm going to show all of these books to you. I'm not going to spend too long talking about each book just because I don't want this video to be a million years long but I actually didn't do a book review video in June and I usually like to do one every month so I'll probably do a few in July to make up for that so if there are any books from this video that you're particularly interested in a more in-depth review and chat about then please let me know in the comments and I will prioritize those for you. Let's jump right in. First off I finished Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa and this is a Japanese inspired fantasy story that follows two characters, Yumiko and Tatsumi. Yumiko grew up at a monastery and she is given charge of a scroll and has to deliver it to a different monastery. Tatsumi, however, is a ninja of sorts who is tasked with finding the scroll that Yumiko carries but ends up guiding her not knowing that she has the scroll and also Yumiko is a kitsune which is a fox spirit so she has fox magic. This is a really fun story it's very much a traveling story and therefore quite episodic and meandering so bear that in mind. I really liked the characters it was quite slow moving so bear that in mind as well it didn't bother me but it is something to just be aware of if you are going to pick this one up. The second book in the series has actually now come out and I'm looking forward to picking that one up. I did enjoy this one. I thought that it was whimsical and I really really loved the Japanese elements of the story because I love Japanese culture. Next up I read Heartstopper by Alice Oseman and this is just volume one. Volume two comes out later this month and this series follows the story of Charlie and Nick who are high school students who fall in love and they're actually a couple from Alice Oseman's first book Solitaire and this follows the origins of their relationship. This was so cute and so fun and so reminiscent of my time in secondary school and I really enjoyed reading it. I really like Alice Oseman's writing style as you will see I have read other books by her now as well and I'm really looking forward to going to her launch of Heartstopper Volume 2 at the Waterstones in Piccadilly next week. Uh, so I will probably at some point tell you all about that but this is just a quick fun graphic novel that I would recommend picking up. It's got great rep for a uh, gay relationship so really cute, really fun. What's not to love? Then I read The Quiet at the End of the World by Lauren James and this is a science fiction book that follows two teenagers who are the last young people on the planet Earth after a virus causes infertility in the human race and it follows their relationship and them coming to terms with the fact that they will be the last people ever born and will eventually be on their own and I just I loved this book it's sparked a love of this author I have read other things by her now as well and I've loved everything that I've read by her so far this was just really insightful and it had great twists in it that I I kind of saw them coming but they were still shocking because they're the kind of twists that you see them coming but you think that you must be wrong because it's just not it's just so shocking and then it happens and you're like how what how how what yeah so highly highly recommend highly recommend next up i reread Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings which is the first book in the Stormlight Archive. I listened to this one on audio as you may know i do all of my rereading on audiobook which means that all of my audiobooks are rereads predominantly and I really love 
this book. It's the second time I've read it. I read it for the first time last year and it's a it's a chunky one but it just doesn't feel like it's chunky you know it just it's so great I'm not going to sit here and gush about Brandon Sanderson for hours because you've heard it all before but please don't be intimidated by the size of this it's really good and I would highly recommend the audiobook actually Michael Cromer and Kate Redding are absolutely fantastic narrators and it made the reading experience just great really next up I read Undercover Princess. This is Princess in Practice. My copy of Undercover Princess hasn't arrived yet. I did buy a copy following borrowing it from the library because I enjoyed it. This follows two teenage girls who attend a boarding school. One of them is a princess undercover and the other is an ordinary girl obsessed with everything to do with princesses and we follow their adventures at school and it's kind of it's got the feeling of fantasy but it's not fantasy it's more like a thrillery type mystery book i really enjoyed it it was just you know it's not very serious it's just a little bit of fun and there is some lgbtqia plus rep but well not this book in Undercover Princess I haven't read this one yet um but we're not necessarily sure of our characters sexualities which I like because it's like we're discovering that with the characters and I really enjoyed it hence why I picked up the second one the next book I read was To Can Keep a Secret by Karen M McManus and this was a true mystery book and mystery is not something I read very often. I used to like mystery quite a lot when I was younger but as I've got older I found that I just find it a little bit stressful and I don't know why. This one was YA so it didn't stress me out which was great uh, but I don't know I, I enjoyed it but I'm not sure that seasoned mystery lovers would enjoy it because there were twists but they weren't necessarily massively shocking, there was a bit of intrigue but it wasn't super intense which made it great for me because it didn't stress me out but just bear that in mind if you really like mystery books it might not be what you're used to. I don't want to tell you anything about the plot of Two Can Keep a Secret because it's a mystery and I feel like you don't really want to know anything about a mystery before you read it so I'm not going to say anything. Then I read The War of the Worlds, the musical drama, Audible original on audio and can I just say that the music was fantastic. It was such a cool listening experience and I would highly recommend it for that reason. Story-wise it creeped me out a lot. I know the story of War of the Worlds but I've never actually listened to it all the way through. My mum used to listen to it a lot while me and my sister were growing up but it would be in snippets. I never listened to the whole thing in one go and let me tell you it's really creepy and it freaked me out quite a lot so bear that in mind if you're as wimpy as me. If you're not you're probably fine. Then I read Radio Silence by Alice Oseman and I actually read this book while listening to the audiobook and I really enjoyed reading it that way. I think the audiobook narration was fantastic and the book was also fantastic. We follow Francis who is a secondary school student on the road to one of the Oxbridge universities, I forget which one, Oxford I think, and we follow her as she becomes involved in this podcast that she has loved for years and we also follow her friendships and her relationships with the people around her and it, I really don't know what to say about this book other than please read it, it's absolutely fantastic it made me so so emotional i never cry at books or any kind of media really it's just not something that i do but this book 
brought tears to my eyes. It honestly did. It was that emotional and that impactful and it really explores finding yourself as a teenager and how difficult that is and how influenced you are by society and your peers and your teachers and your parents and everybody in your life and that can make it hard to decide for yourself what you actually want and I just I thought that this was an absolutely fantastic book and I think that anyone and everyone can and should read this one. Then I picked up The Beholder by Anna Bright and this is a fantasy book that follows a protagonist named Sella who is due to become engaged but when she is very publicly and embarrassingly rejected she has to go on a journey across the sea to find a fiance essentially and I had a very mixed experience with this book. I feel like it was really slow in places and then jumped ahead way too quickly, especially in terms of relationships in other places. So, and also the protagonist really bugged me. I get that this book is supposed to be about a girl who is going to be reliant on a man, but her easy acquiescence of that fact just bothered me. She didn't seem to fight against it at all and I'm not sure if I'll be picking up the second one. I feel like it almost started to redeem itself towards the end so I might pick up the sequel but it's not going to be a priority. But then having said that a lot of people have really enjoyed this one so I think it's going to be a very personal preference kind of thing and whether or not the trope of that very atypical damsel in distress type character bugs you or not. It kind of bugs me so for that reason I didn't connect with the main character and as a character driven reader that made it a really difficult read for me but if that's not something that bothers you then you might like this because it is a very in-depth look at relationships and so that might be interesting to you. Not sure it was quite my cup of tea but the writing is great and I can see why so many people would like it. Then I read Gemina which is book two in the Illuminae Files by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman and I liked this one even better than Illuminae which was the first book. I can't really tell you what this one is about because it's a sequel and I don't want to spoil you for the first book but the first book follows two characters as they escape from a planet on board a ship after the planet was attacked by terrorists essentially and the terrorists are chasing down the fleeing ships and then things on board the ships start to go wrong and it's also a multimedia format book so it is told through emails and instant messages and reports and all sorts of mixed media and that makes it a really quick read and a really interesting read and I actually really love the format that these books are written in. It makes it a really different and fun reading experience. I think the reason I liked this one better than book one is just because I connected to the characters in this book more than I did the characters in book one. Not to say that I didn't like the characters in book one, I just liked these characters better. So yeah, I would highly recommend this series. because They're quite big books. They're about, well this one's about 660 pages. I think the first book was about 600 pages. So it seems like they're pretty big books but actually because of the format they're written in they're actually really quick to read and I managed to read each of them in about a day. So I would highly, highly recommend them especially if sci-fi isn't usually your thing. I think it's actually a really easy sci-fi to get into because it's not it's heavy on the tech 
but it's not heavy on the space and I think a lot of people struggle with the spacey elements of sci-fi or at least my sister does and my friend at work does so maybe that will help. Then I read And the Ocean Was Our Sky by Patrick Ness and again I read this book whilst listening to the audiobook and I mean I don't necessarily think you need to do that with Radio Silence I feel like that really added to the experience with uh, And the Ocean Was Our Sky I really just did it for convenience sake because I wanted to read it in an evening and I wouldn't have been able to do that without the assistance of an audiobook because I'm a slow reader but when I have an audiobook going I can have the audiobook speed on two times speed so it meant that the book was only about two hours long which meant that I was able to read it in an evening and I really enjoyed it the actual book itself is beautiful the illustrations are gorgeous and the story was unexpected it's essentially Moby Dick told from the perspective of the whale and kind of flipped on its head I don't want to say too much because it's such a short book but if you have time and you can get hold of it from your library because I do appreciate that because it's an illustrated book it's a little bit more expensive which is why I borrowed it from the library rather than buying it um, but if you are able to read it and you have time then I would recommend it it is it's a nice story I don't really know how else to describe it other than nice then I read Indigo Donut by Patrice Lawrence and this was a difficult read for me. Not because there was anything wrong with the book but because the themes I just struggled with. It is not a happy book, it is contemporary but it is not like fluffy contemporary. It's really deep, it's quite dark, it's very difficult, the themes are very heavy so I would advise caution if you're thinking of picking this one up. I was really triggered by the bullying that happened in this book and I'd say that if bullying is a trigger for you then this one will be triggering because there's a lot of that. This follows a character named Indigo who is in the foster care system because her mother and father were drug addicts and they got high and whilst they were high her father murders her mother whilst she, Indigo, is outside the room so and that's that's not a spoiler that's like <laughs> the first couple of chapters so if that's happening in the first couple of chapters you can appreciate that it's it's a pretty dark book I think it got easier about halfway through but it's not an easy read and if violence addiction bullying domestic problems foster systems dysfunctional families if any of those kinds of things are triggering for you then be cautious about this book I found it really difficult to read and what I, I hesitate to say that I enjoyed it because I found it so difficult to read I'm glad that I read it but it was a struggle in places so just keep that in mind then I'm going to talk about two books I didn't read them back to back but I have decided to reread the Mediator series by Meg Cabot, which is a series that I read and reread and reread and reread. I don't even know how many times when I was hmm, probably around 11 or 12 years old and absolutely loved. In this series, we follow a character named Suze, who is a mediator, which means that she can see and speak to the dead and it's her job to help them move on to wherever it is they're supposed to go next and the other main character is Jessie who happens to be a ghost and um, I just I love love this series and I've been rereading it on audiobook and I'm just loving it I think it's one of those rare cases where I'm loving it because of the nostalgia as well but even if I hadn't read them when I was 11 or 12 I think I'd still love them even now it's just such a joy returning to these and I read the first two installments in the series in the month of June I've now read three and four unfortunately number five isn't available on audiobook for some reason so I'm going to physically read that one and then finish off the series um, on audio. Having said that, 
it turns out that uh, another two books in the series have been written and published since I originally read them so there's a couple more books for me to read and I'm super excited because I just I love I just love this series and yeah I love it. Moving on now to The Twisted Tree by Rachel Burge and this is well it's horror but paranormal fantasy horror and it's also young adult and thank goodness for that because this creeped the hell out of me. This follows a character named Martha who has lost the sight in one of her eyes and is starting to be able to tell things about people by touching their clothes and so she goes to visit her grandmother as a means of escape and to try and figure out what's happening to her but when she arrives she discovers that her grandmother is unfortunately dead and a strange boy has moved into her grandmother's house. Now this is YA, it's, it's marketed and sold in the YA section. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that a young, young adult read it because I feel like there are some things that happen in this book that you wouldn't want to teach a young teenager that those things are a good idea because they're really not. I'm not going to go into them because I don't want to give spoilers but just keep that in mind. Uh, I am a wimp so the fact that this scared me is not really an indication that this is a scary book. It is an indication that I'm, I mean I'm, I'm a wimp. That's all there is to it. This is creepy. I did not know what was going on which I suppose is a good thing but it creeped me out even more and yeah it's just it's a weird book I enjoyed it it's only short I am glad I read it but I did then have to stay up and read something else for a bit because I finished it at night and I could not go to bed I would not have been able to sleep so yeah hence why I next picked up The Paper and Heart Society by Lucy Powery and I loved this this was exactly what I needed after finishing The Twisted Tree. I only read like a chapter or two of this before bed that night and then I finished it the following day because it was just so fun and whimsical. We follow a character named Tabby who moves to a new town and although she is a very introverted and anxious person, she also has a love of books and reading. So, relatable and she joins a book club and discovers friendship and it's just it's so good it is marketed at the younger end of the young adult spectrum but honestly anyone who is watching this video should read this book because if you're watching this video chances are you love reading and you love books and that means you will love this because these are our people reflected in the pages of this book and it was just so comforting and fun and relatable and I particularly related to Tabby's issues with anxiety and feelings of lack of self-worth and just this was a joy to read and I think I'm probably going to reread it very soon because it just made me feel so warm and fuzzy and happy. Then I read The Next Together, another book by Lauren James and another science fiction young adult book. I think that's basically all she writes is, um, well all she writes, she's written loads of them, um, young adult science fiction. And this one is very different to The Quiet at the End of the World. This one follows Catherine and Matthew who are reborn throughout time and fall in love every time and it follows their story over four periods in time so there are some historical fiction elements to this one that I wasn't expecting and I did initially struggle with that a little bit because historical fiction really is not my thing but I really ended up enjoying this and when I got to the end of the book I was desperate to pick up book two but I haven't been able to yet. I have managed to get hold of a copy now so I will probably be picking it up next but I absolutely loved this book. I loved the relationships. It was really interesting. She once again killed it with the twists and honestly I cannot wait to meet Lauren at Yalk because I just, I have questions. I don't know if she'll answer them 
but I have questions. Then another audiobook reread, Elantris by Brandon Sanderson and I mean I'm not going to stop and talk about this one for long. We follow Sereni and Rayodin. Rayodin is a prince, Sereni is a princess and they are entering into an arranged marriage to bring an alliance between two kingdoms but then something goes wrong and everything is centred around this magical city of Elantris that used to be a place filled with people blessed by something called the Sheod and once they were blessed they became these godlike creatures who were beautiful in appearance and able to access magic but once something went wrong with the Sheod all of those previously blessed turned into these zombie-like creatures and are now locked away in the city as though they are dead. This is a really political fantasy book. I absolutely love the characters. Sereni is quite possibly one of my favourite female characters ever. She is just so cool and she is riddled with self-doubt and confidence issues but she stuffs it all inside when she's in public and is a complete badass and I love it. Please read it. It's so great. I don't know that I necessarily recommend the audiobook for a first time read. I didn't get on massively well with the narrator but because it was a reread for me that wasn't a problem but I think if you want to get the best experience out of this one I'd read a physical copy or a ebook first. Then I picked up just a short one, Flying a Witch by Chihiro Ishizuka, which is a manga. This is volume two. We follow Makoto and her black cat familiar as they move in with some family so that she can complete her witch training. It's very episodic. It's light. It's cute. It's nothing special, but it's a very quick read and I enjoy it for that reason. Then I reread Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Do I need to tell you the plot of this? I don't think so. But we follow a boy. He lives with his aunt and uncle, who are awful. He finds out he's actually a wizard. He goes off to wizard school and adventures ensue. Loved it. That's all there is to it. And finally, the last book that I read in the month of June was Strange the Dreamer by Lani Taylor. And again, I both read and listened to this book at the same time. And I didn't do that right from the very start. I decided to pick up the audiobook probably around 100 pages in just because I was struggling to get through it because I was having issues with headaches and stuff and I really wanted to read it but it was just a struggle for me to read words on a page so it was really helpful for me to have that extra assistance because I really wanted to read and I really wanted to read this but I was just really struggling because of my head pain so I did that and actually I'm really glad that I did because the audiobook of this is amazing. The narrator is fantastic and I would highly, highly recommend picking up the audiobook. It made, it made this book for me, I think. I would have liked it anyway, but it turned liking it into loving it and I did really enjoy this one. I actually have a 24 hour reading vlog up on my channel where I read the majority of this, the last 450 pages, so I will link that for you somewhere because if you want more in-depth thoughts about this one that's where they'll be. We follow a character named Laszlo Strange who is obsessed with a land called Weep. Weep isn't its real name, it's just what everybody knows it as now because the true name of the city was forgotten and nobody knows why. And nobody knows what happened in the city of Weep to make everybody forget about it. But Laszlo doesn't want to forget. Laszlo wants to know everything that he can about Weep and when a delegation from the city comes to his town looking for people to go on a journey to Weep to help them solve a problem, Laszlo is determined to go with them and finally see the land that he's been dreaming of for all his life. Everybody that I've heard talk about this book says that it is really slow, really slow paced and I totally see why. My impression of it is that it is 
epic fantasy in construct but low fantasy in plot and that juxtaposition can make it seem really slow. That slowness didn't bother me because I'm used to epic fantasy so that kind of structure is something I'm familiar with but there isn't a lot of plot going on in this book. I can't tell you any more plot than what I just did because otherwise I'm taking you like halfway into the book. It's it's a slow burn, there's not a lot going on. What this book is, is it's fantastic character development, beautiful writing, beautiful world building and loads of atmosphere. And if you like that kind of thing, if you're a character driven reader or a world driven reader, then you'll enjoy this one. If you're a plot driven reader though, I think you'll find it frustrating. I really liked it, I've already bought Muse of Nightmares. I'll be picking that up really soon. I can't wait to see what happens next and I really, I don't know, I wasn't expecting to enjoy this as much as I did. I was scared by all of the reviews that said it was slow but actually, like I said, that really didn't bother me at all and I expected it to. So don't necessarily write it off just for that reason is what I'm saying. And that is it. Those are all of the books that I read in June, as if that weren't enough. And if you've made it to the end of this video, then congratulations and leave me a little moon emoji down below so I know that you made it here. I, like I said at the beginning, loved everything that I read this month. It's made me so excited to keep reading. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. If not, let me know what you read in June. I'd love to know. And that's it for this one. Thank you so so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button. And I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks! Bye.